how do you do? I expect you know something of the skill and care that attended my birth. And as you see, I'm a pretty sharp specimen, even if I say so myself. But today, I want to speak up on behalf of some of my downtrodden and persecuted relatives, the blades who don't get fair play. Now take my cousin Willie, for instance. Poor old Willie fell into the hands of one of those people who ruin their blades even before they get them home. This man carelessly bunged them into one of his waistcoat pockets, where he found himself up against a really tough proposition. A cigarette lighter, in fact. See what happened? Look at Willie under the microscope, and then look at me. I ask you, was it fair of that man to blame Willie for giving him a bad shave? What he should have done, of course, was to put Willie tenderly between two flat surfaces in a notebook or wallet. So, then there's my cousin Stanislaus, who fell into the brutal hands of a very common type, the careless unwrapper. You'd be amazed at the damage a piece of paper can do to a finely ground edge. Now will you believe me when I tell you that incorrect unwrapping does far more damage to a blade than a rough shave. Here's the right way to do it. See how this man does everything in his power to avoid damage to the finely ground edges? And kindly note, by the end. Some horrible things to my uncle Arthur and brought my cousin Ethelbert to an untimely end. Now here's another thing, and for purposes of illustration, I'm allowing you to gaze on a special portrait of myself, which brings out all the ahem, finer details of my design. I particularly want to draw your attention to the little line there, and the double line near the other edge. Get the idea? Use a different edge each day, and you'll get an equal amount of use from both. That's what this man does. He's wise. He washes before shaving and lathers very thoroughly. This is half the battle, really. And so he gets a nice, clean, easy shave. I wouldn't mind working for him myself. Now, let's see how this wise and noble man treats his razor after he's shaved. He loosens the handle and rinses the razor very thoroughly. Correct. Running water is best, and better still if it's hot. Then he shakes the razor and puts it away, still loose. Any questions? I can assure you that this non-drying does less damage than careless wiping. See here? The camera cannot lie. One other thing. Clean your razor periodically with a nail brush say, each time you change your blade. And that's about all concerning us blades. But my brother-in-law, Augustus Chemley, Vere de Vere, an aristocrat one-piece razor, has asked me to put in a word on behalf of himself and his blue-blooded family. Augustus begs you to wind him back properly by turning his handle. He implores you not to try and force his wings back into place. You'll ruin his constitution if you do. And that's the lot. If even a tenth of what I've told you has sunk in, then I'm duly rewarded. Hey, what about me? I represent the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Valet Razors and Strops. I earnestly beg you not to go away until you've heard my story. It's surprising how some men, who normally are quite mechanically minded, misuse us valets through sheer lack of understanding. A common fault is to suspend the strop too low, or too high, as in this case. You can easily see what's wrong. Only one side of the blade's edge is being stropped. Then there's another common fault, that of taking the razor too far up the strop. The blade hits the metal clinch, and the fine edge on the blade has had it. Here's another fault. He isn't keeping the strop as taut as it should be. You know, this man is simply asking for trouble. Look out. There. Now his strop has headed. But he's a far happier man today. 
One or two more cut strops and blunted blades soon cured him of his expensive bad habits. So now he hooks his new strop breast high and holds it taut. What's more, he keeps the razor at right angles to the strop and strops with slow, piston-like movements. He knows, too, that about a dozen strokes are enough, not hundreds. Another error this man used to be guilty of before he saw the light was to hold his razor at the wrong angle, which made it pull and drag. As usual, we got the blame, of course. Now, angle is very important with us, that is. And as soon as this man discovered the correct angle, like this, almost flat against the face, he found that the blade will cut through one's face fungus cleanly and without scraping. It's easy, once you know how. Having done all that, and achieved a face as smooth as a baby's, one opens the razor without removing the blade, rinses it well, preferably in hot running water, shakes it, and then gives it a few strokes on the strop. The few strokes after shaving are the most important, because a little oil from the strop covers the blade edge with a fine rust-resisting film. Occasionally, you should scrape the strop blunt knife in order to remove the dust and grit. You should remember to keep the leather soft and supple. Then occasionally, but not too often, work a little dressing into the stropping surface, not on the back. You can use lanolin or any vegetable oil. Never use anything that is abrasive. In this way, your strop will keep in perfect condition and I'll guarantee to give you a perfect always. Just a minute. Before you break up the party, I simply must tell you about my poor brother Claude, who got himself sadly busted. His owner cursed him and called him a duck, but it wasn't true. Old Claude was as sound as I am. The truth of the matter is, the man dropped his razor one morning. Not realizing that the razor must be in a state of perfect adjustment, the owner merely picked it up, put poor old Claude in, and started to tighten up. Now, Gillette and Valley razors are by no means delicate, but they are precision made. So if you drop yours, or knock it, or treat it too roughly, send it to your dealer who will return it to the factory. Above all, Always use Gillette blades in your Gillette holder. They're made for each other. And in this way, you simply cannot go wrong. Bye-bye. See you in the morning.